Hey, welcome to FCRB TV. And uh, we have had some drama here in the uh, round of 16. That is concluded now. And now we have the quarterfinals set. We've had some phenomenal matches. Um, I think I'm going to talk about, highlight the Argentina France match, which started off the uh, round of 16 ties. Very good game, breakout game for Kaelin Mbappe. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the match of the tournament so far, I believe. And I'm really going to focus on that because I think there's a lot to talk about in, in the match between Belgium and Japan. And then obviously England and Colombia, you know, summed it all up quite nicely with a penalty shootout. Um, I don't think that match was great to watch. There was a lot of theatrics going on in that one, and we'll talk about all that as well because some of that took place in the, some of that took place in the uh, Mexico Brazil game as we all know, but we've got some phenomenal matchups with um, France Uruguay to start on Friday, followed by Brazil Belgium, then Saturday we'll have Croatia Russia, but before that will be England versus Sweden. Um, so, yeah, so it started off well. Um, the games have been quite good, I believe. Um, France and France and Argentina, it was 4-3, the final score. But um, I never felt that Argentina deserved to be... The score didn't reflect how much better France were than Argentina. Argentina have individuals who can make a difference, i.e. Di Maria, Kun Aguero. Uh, Messi did not have a good tournament, but he had a good one in 2014. But he just didn't have a good tournament this time around. Um, so, you know, in the game against France, he really didn't have, you know, all uh, too much to do. He couldn't get free. Um, but, you know, Kylian Mbappe took over that game. 19-year-old, you know, fast as lightning, you know, good technique. Gave the Argentinian defense fits. And Argentina weren't organized enough. So, you know, they weren't organized. They were a bit, you know, sixes and sevens defensively. Um, they were kind of all over the map, you know, as, as a unit. So, you know, an organized French side took advantage of that, you know. Uh, Benjamin Pavard scored, you know, arguably the goal of the tournament. Um, he hit that quite nicely um, to, to draw level at two. And then Mbappe scored the next two, and you know it ended up four three. But that game, even when Argentina Argentina went ahead two one, I didn't believe that they were going to hold on to it because the defense isn't great, um, and um, France were about the side. They were about the side. So and I think Argentina, you know, they were just trying to will their way to to full time ahead but it just it, it just could not happen they weren't good enough you know so they move on and then followed by uh you know Uruguay versus uh Portugal again a game where there was a clearly superior side um Portugal tried to manage the tempo and tried to keep it within striking distance drew level through Pepe to make it 1-1 but again you Uruguay is difficult to play against, you know. They really control the tempo. You try to you try to take that, you know, power from them, but they're so good at it. And, uh, you know, they really didn't have that many chances in the second half, but they got one. Cavani scores again, 2-1. They're, they're off to the quarterfinals. You know, then, you know, then we, we start talking about the theatrics when you get to Mexico and Brazil. Um, and, and again, it happened in the england Colombia game that just finished today. Um, but in Mexico-Brazil, uh, second half, William, Neymar, they turned up the pace. They were really getting after them. William was a big problem for the Mexican defense midfielders. But, you know, it, it, it needs to be talked about that, you know, Neymar's, you know, theatrics are just too much. It's unbelievable, to be honest with you. 
It's like, come on, man. Every time they touch this man, he falls down. He's rolling around on the ground. It's like, bro, they didn't even touch it that bad. And, and you know, the debate, you know, that's been going on is that, like, oh, did Layoun mean to step on him? Should Layoun been been sent off? Listen, if Neymar doesn't want somebody to step on him, don't lay on the ground. He's always on the ground. I personally don't think that... Okay, so people said Layoun knew what he was doing. Okay, yeah, okay, he knew what he was doing. But if you looked at it, he didn't he didn't stomp him. He didn't stomp him like we've seen Diego Costa stomp people. We've seen that. We've seen when Pepe stomps people. This guy, he kind of put his boot on him. Big deal. And he knew that this guy was going to go. I, I I don't know why Layoun did it anyway. I really don't know why. But what I do know is Neymar's reaction afterwards, bruh. Come on, man. Stop. That's terrible. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, really. Like, come on. It's just a joke. It's And tr trying to get people sent off is unacceptable. Don't ask for cards. Like, that's, I mean, man up and play them 11 v 11. It has to be something really egregious to, to, to really ask for anything. And that's what was going on in the Columbia-England game, which I'll, which I'll touch on when I get there. But, um... I tell you, Neymar, bruh, I don't care if you scored that goal and that, and they gave you an assist on that toe poke that you that that Ochoa saved that rolled off to to Firmino to score the second goal. Whatever, man. All the, uh, Neymar is hype for me. Neymar is all hype. He's really not that dope. He doesn't really. Coutinho's better than him, to be honest with you. But Neymar is 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 hype. People buy into it. They believe it. Yada yada yada. We already we already saw in Champions League when he was at PSG and they bought him for that game against Real Madrid. That tie against Real Madrid, where was Neymar? He he punked out. We we already know what he's about. So he's gonna keep doing that diving nonsense. Belgium is gonna come and try to tackle him, and they would jump on the ground and roll around, try to get people sent off so they can so they can have numerical advantage. So uh, yeah, so that was pretty whack, you know. But to be honest. Willian turned up the pace that really gave Mexico trouble and you know the the deserved team won the game in the end but you know Neymar doesn't need to do all that diving um so then you have uh now the game of the tournament the game of the tournament was Japan versus Belgium and the reason why for me this was the game of the tournament is because on paper it was supposed to be 4-0 Belgium. Belgium was supposed to, were, were, were supposed to throttle the, the Blue Samurai, but that didn't happen. Japan came with a game plan, came with a game plan and saw it through and almost stole the match. They came in, they worked hard, they weathered storms. This is what all young footballers, I hope a lot of young footballers got to watch that game. And those who really love football and want to be a footballer at the highest level, Japan really showed you what it's about. It's not about being the biggest. It's not about being the strongest. It's not about being the fastest. It's about being the smartest. Understanding your game plan. And then once you understand the game plan, collectively you guys have to see it through. Execute. And that's what they did against Belgium. They came in, to, in, in, the, in the beginning of the game. They tried to find moments where they could strike. They weren't really getting too many opportunities, but they made sure that they held Belgium at bay. Belgium came. Uh, Belgium weren't, weren't too sharp, but that's credit to the Japanese, I believe. They kept working hard. Then, boom, second half, Japan gets their one chance. Boom, one nothing. Belgium is shocked. Before you know it, they get another chance. Boom, two nothing. Belgium is like, oh, my God, we're going to go out. What are we going to do? So what do they turn to? They turn to the only thing that could have possibly saved them. They subbed on Fellaini. They subbed on Chadley. And now they started lofting balls into the air because they, they have a huge size advantage against Japan. And one of my uh, coaching buddies uh, was um, trying to blame the Japanese for not managing the game properly. But you know what? What were they supposed to do? The first goal that Vertonghen scored to make it 2-1 was, was fortuitous. I mean, he did not mean to score that goal. He tried to put it across the box, but it floated into the goal. So what's Japan to do there? 
you know, then two, then two, they started whipping balls into Fellaini, and he's bigger than all of them. So what happens again? Okay, you can say, oh, deny the cross. But listen, it's like 76 minutes gone, 80 minutes gone. You're trying to get out there. Whip, cross is whipped in. The guy's bigger. Boom, 2-2. Two, two. You know what I'm saying? The only mistake I think Japan made was I do not understand why they were playing direct corners instead of playing short corners. Why would you play direct corners when they're bigger than you? And then they've got Courtois and goal who's bigger than your whole squad. You know, so you whip a ball in, he catches it, starts to counterattack, boom, see you later, 3-2, they score on the counterattack. But again, it was the best game because, again, Belgium did not give up. They, they, they changed their tactics, you know, put, started putting the balls in the air to put the Japanese under pressure, and they, uh, they, they found success in that. But again, for me, the, the, Belgium may have won the match, but but uh, Japan won our hearts because they came out here and they made it a game. In football, if you come with 11 men, you can do something. Just come with the right game plan, the right mindset, and you can do something. It doesn't matter who's on the other side. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Even if you lose, you can make it a game. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it. You know? Japan was so close. You have to... Be unified in your in your plan. You have to be, you have you have to try to become one thought, one idea. All all 22 men, the 11 that are on, the substitutes that may get to come on. You all have to be, have one that one one thought. This is how we're going to do it. And Japan showed us. It was beautiful. I was so impressed. And proud of the Japanese, how they played the game. And Belgium were, were, were good too to, to, to find alternate routes to where they wanted to be, where they felt they deserved to be, and that was the quarterfinals. And they got there. For me, that was the best game of the tournament um, because you could see uh, tactical matchups. Uh, you could see how the coaches had made adjustments, made plans, and were trying to get those plans to come to fruition. Fantastic game, that one. I couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. Um, but it sets up a nice quarterfinal between Belgium and Brazil. Uh, then we go over to Russia and Spain. I'm not even going to talk too much about that because thoroughly disappointed with Spain. They, they were playing like their mind was somewhere else. Pathetic. Russia had heart. They fought for their country. They're the home side. They win on penalties. They're off. Croatia and Denmark... I kind of felt bad for Kasper Schmeichel because he was trying to will his team. He was trying to save every shot and try to get Denmark through. And I tell you what, it was beautiful to see. And mind you, Peter Schmeichel is a Man United legend. I'm a gunner. I don't like Man United. But I, was, I, I felt for Peter Schmeichel watching his son make all these saves that he used to make for their country. And they, he, almost made, he almost got it done. But it was just so awesome to see how his father, you know, watched him make these saves. And he used to do the same things. And the, the backstory between uh, father and son, how, you know, Peter Schmeichel allowed his son to become the keeper he wanted to be. I do not believe he has a great, you know, influence on his keeping style he allowed Casper to find his own way in the same profession and he's there watching his son supporting him so that was so beautiful to see um you know uh you know good for Croatia to find a way to get through in the shootout but uh that was really awesome to see I would say after Japan the performance of Casper Schmeichel was phenomenal um if we didn't sign Bird Leno I would have said why don't we sign him but uh, we've got a good goalkeeper in, in, in Leno, so the Gunners are going to be all right. But I tell you, that was nice to see. And then uh, Sweden, Sweden, Switzerland. We we knew if, if Switzerland is not playing Serbia every day, they're not going to win. That's how Switzerland is. Because all the elbows that they have in their team, they want to get Serbia. That's when they want to show up. I knew they weren't going to beat Sweden today. It was a boring match. And uh, but, but Sweden's on a mission. Sweden's on a mission. England better be ready. You know, they better be ready. And to speak of England, today, you know, I spoke to one of my English lads. 
Um, he was, you know, thoroughly disappointed in the performance. Happy they got through, but thoroughly disappointed with the performance. Felt too many players on both sides were diving, trying to get cautions and, you know, things of that nature. But I try to tell him, like, you know, he already knows, but it is what it is. In this day and age, you know, football's changed a bit, you know, changed kind of a lot. And dudes don't like to man up. They like to, to throw themselves on the ground, play acting, asking the referee to get involved. It's it's kind of, it's kind of bad, you know. It's kind of bad. But uh, um, it was one of those tight games. Went all the way to I thought I thought I thought England were done when Jordan Henderson missed his pen. I thought they were done, but hey, you know I'm a big big advocate for the penalty shootout. If you don't have the guts to take it, and when we say guts to take it, you you have guts to come up and take it, but if you have the guts to finish it to make the pen, you know you you, you get stage fright. Then hey man, you, your team doesn't deserve to go. And those last two Colombian players, Uribe and. Uh, Carlos Baca, tough break, bro, tough break. But I tell you what, growing up, I was always taught that the, when you stand on a pen, if you're right-footed, it's always hard to go across your body. So if you're going to go across your body, you've got to smash it the way that Cuadrado smashed it. If you're trying to place it across your body, it's hard and it gives the keeper a chance. And that's what happened with Baca versus Pickford. You know, I thought he was going to roll it to his right side the same way that Muriel did, but he tried to go across his body, and Pickford picked him off. Um, and then the other lad, he laced it and hit off the bar. Uribe, nah, that ain't it, bro. But, hey, you know what? England-Sweden is going to be a fire game. That could go to penalties again. That could go to penalties again. Um, so that's going to be on Saturday. But uh, fantastic matches. Tournament has been great so far. Um, uh, my predictions from the start of the round of 16 to where we are now. The only team that I be believe I lost was uh, was Spain, um, and I I don't remember with with Colombia and England it was it was back and forth. But I do know that um, um, I I think Spain uh, Sweden Sweden will get. We'll find a way because I, I think they're on a mission. They've already taken out Holland. They've taken out Italy. They've taken out Germany. And now they're going to take out England. I think so. I'm sure for all my England friends that are watching. But, yeah, I think that um, Sweden will will find a way to, to derail you lads. And they'll get to the semifinals. I hope that Croatia now can can uh, get past the hosts. That would be a more enticing semifinals. And then on the other side, I think the final before the final is Uruguay versus France. I think the winner of Uruguay-France will go through. Cavani's carrying an injury, and we don't know if he's going to be fit in time to face the French. I personally, my heart says France, but if Cavani's healthy, my brain says Uruguay could do it. The Celeste can do it. So it's going to be an uh, incredible game. KG affair. Um, there won't be all this Mbappe running around. He's going to play well, but he's not going to have all that space that he had against Argentina. That just goes to show how poor the Argentinians were. Gave too, many, too much space all over the place. You know, it was like a park. It was like a pickup game. You just run around, score goals. That's not going to happen on Friday. That's not. Um... So, the, I'm, I'm saying it now. I said it in my last video. I believe Uruguay will win. But that is not knowing that Cavani would get injured against Portugal. So, if Cavani is fit enough to give it a go. Um, the slight edge actually now is with France. Because Cavani is not fully fit. Whether he plays or not. But the winner of that game, I think, will go to the finals and win it. And win it. Um, then you've got Brazil and uh, uh, Belgium. I think Belgium scare against Japan lets us know that they may not be ready for this level per se. And Brazil with Neymar's theatrics, go and win a free kick, score a free kick, beat Belgium 1-0, something along those lines. But we shall see. I think so the semifinals will be, I can't pick a side between France and, uh, you know what, I would do it. With Cavani injured, France is into the semifinals. Brazil is in the other semifinals. 
Croatia comes through at the top, knocking out the host. And Sweden knocks off um, England in dramatic fashion. It's going to be real dramatic. And then I will talk to you all about the final four uh, by Sunday or Saturday night. All right. So let me know what you think. And uh, if you haven't subscribed by now, please do. Let's talk for you. Leave your comments below. And uh, we'll be back at it, all right? So, it's all to, to, to America. Happy 4th of July tomorrow, all right? And uh, we'll be back, all right? FCRB TV. Ciao.